Yeah, your concept of Moloch is fascinating. And I mean, to quickly define it for people that don't know, and I'd love to go a little deeper on it, um, you, you might say that Moloch is a metaphorical term for irrational collective behavior. And I think you've said the evil thing about this monster is even though everyone sees it and understands it, they still can't get out of the race, which is ultimately to the bottom, and potentially everybody's demise or the demise of resources. And this has happened throughout history. Um, and this is something, I'd say it's pretty much your signature IP. And it happens in only certain well, situations. Know, I, I want to be clear. I want to be clear. <laughs> this is, Moloch is not my idea. Yeah. This Moloch is, of course, the demon has been with us since the beginning of history. And uh, there have been many wonderful things written about it. Scott Alexander wrote a fantastic piece on, on his blog, Slate Dark Codex, called Meditations on Moloch. I would highly recommend. You know, in religions around the world, the devil goes by many different names, and Moloch goes by many different names also. What I'm doing is just pointing out here that the real villain in this, the villains here are not the CEOs of the tech companies, it's not AI researchers, it's Moloch itself, himself. That's who we're, who we're up against here. So, and um, as you said, uh, I thought I think your definition was really, really good. Everybody can see that we're being pitted against each other. Yet, it's still rational for every one person to keep fighting against the other people in the race. Because it's set up that way. The only way we can all get out of the race is by collaborating with each other instead. And it, it's so that this doesn't sound too depressing. I think it might be worth just taking a minute to remind ourselves how we've successfully defeated Moloch in many other battles throughout history, you know. Evolution, first of all, has a, built in a lot of collaboration mechanisms, not just in us, but in other animals too. Generally, animals that could kill each other because they have, like cats, for example, or lions, they have evolutionary instincts that inhibit them from fighting unnecessarily. We're the same. If two dudes get into a drunken bar fight, you know, and start having at it, you know, there's still this deep inhibition towards actually killing the other person. <laughs> because it turned out that the groups in <clears throat> evolutionary history <clears throat> that didn't have that inhibition got out-competed with other groups that could get along better, right? Just going to have a sip of water. And then early humans took this to another level. We invented gossip which is also a great way to collaborate because now all the moochers and cheaters and liars start to get a personal incentive actually to be more collaborative because if they aren't, <laughs> they start getting basically socially punished by others. And then when societies got even better and people started having to bigger, when societies grew and we ran into a lot of strangers we'd never met before so that the gossip thing and the reputation thing didn't work, we invented a legal system to, again, defeat Moloch. So even if you're two strangers are de dealing with each other, they know that if they kill each other or violate the contract or whatever that they sign, that's a bad idea just for them egoistically. So what it always does, this, this collaboration anti-Moloch um, strategies, it makes your personal incentives aligned with with a greater good right so that's what we need to do here also we need to make sure that the incentives with ai are aligned with with a greater good there's a lot of nerd research we're doing some here at mit where i'm at the moment uh, on how you can make machines have incentives how you can make ai have incentives aligned with their, their owners incentives you also obviously have to make sure that the corporations that own the ais have incentives that are aligned that's where we're failing right now, because they have an incentive to make money. If it were biotech, there would be all these regulations they have to meet, or actually, for that matter, almost any other industry. You know, if you're a car company, you have a lot of safety regulations. If you're, you can't build a nuclear reactor on Trafalgar Square without first demonstrating to the British government, you know, that it's safe. It's actually AI that's the weird exception where there is no meaningful regulations at all. And that's just because it's the new kid on the block, right? And and policymakers haven't had time to catch up.
So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real. And he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four week crypto boot camp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.